all gear, no game. Let's go. But first, I don't know why I said first. But Bianca, <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 I've been thinking. First. It, okay. I, holy, look at the. It's okay. It's chill. What I wanted to say is, I've been thinking about this all day. Woke up in the morning, and I Feeling was just like P Diddy. Yes. <laughs> Um, also, wait, yes, I'm going to say this right now. Underrated band? Um, what's that? What are they called? Bro. bro. You don't even know, and then you're going to say, oh, an underrated band. What literally is that band? The one we were just, just listening, listening to? Just listening to. The All right, whatever, it doesn't matter, but we watch. What the? Oh, it's going to kill me, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I, what I Wait, wa- they're called uh something about the sun? Or... Yeah, it's like Empire, Empire of the Empire Sun. of the Sun. Empire Got of the it. Sun is so good. Empire of the Sun is awesome. I because that one song, to, uh, "Walking on a Dream." Yeah, that, it is just classic. That takes dream. me back to when I was nine years old. Nine? Years old. I don't think it even came out it, then. It was like two thousand eight, dude. So dude, really, look it up. Bianca. Walking on a Dream. Yes, a hundred percent. Two thousand eight. Look it up. Why are we? Okay, but also what I want, we, we had to watch the director's cut for my class of Blade Runner, and hmm. Worst movie ever. One of the more crazy movies I've ever seen in my crazy. entire life. So if you want to go on to Xfinity and purchase purchase a $4 movie that will blow your mind. Will not blow your mind. Will literally blow it into boredom because it nothing makes sense. Get the sense. director's cut of that. 2008. Let's- God, I'm a sav. It came don't even that get, don't even at me dude. long ago don't even attack me bro how many years is on that? friday we're gonna have our first ever three person podcast in person got a new zoom recorder we're gonna be hooking that up and jonah channon shy high is gonna be here chai high <laughs> huh that's his music name oh yeah 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 chai is gonna be here we're gonna have a packed house. She's gonna be so loud. Chilin and Silent. That's what I'm gonna make a movie called Adventures, the Albany Adventures of Chilin and Silent. My you're... dog Simon and Chilin. Which Cutest is name. his sister's dog Chai. Yes. They know this. She featured on an episode. Oh yeah. <laughs> she's so cute. She's because uh, me holding her is the only way she just shuts up. So <laughs> Giants, baby. We're gonna start off we're gonna do another hybrid MLB Giants UFC episode. Um Minds racing. What did we talk about? Did we talk about UFC last weekend, MLB, or upcoming card and newly announced fights? So that's basically the rundown of what we're gonna do. There's some fights I'm gonna have some hot takes on, and also, screw it, let's just talk about the San Francisco Giants, okay? Brandon Crawford, stay hot, my brother. And you know something, <laughs> something that is crazy. We are top two i want to say in the mlb in home runs okay you know we've been towards 30 there's 30 teams in the mlb we've been basically (laughs) 30 for the past mm, since 2016 so this is a big deal it's a big year for us brandon crawford what did he have he has nine home runs now wow yeah um Alex Dickerson hit a three-run bomb today. We still got two more games against the Reds. We got to finish out. Anthony Desclafani thrown like a Cy Young. We basically have three Cy Young Award winners on our team between Alex Wood, Anthony Desclafani, and Kevin Gosman. We have arguably the best staff in the league. Top three, we out of um, to, out of the top five best team ERAs in the league. I'm pretty sure the Giants, Padres, and Dodgers are all in the top five. So anybody that wants to say their division is better than the NL West. Shut up, because <laughs> the NOS is savage. I'm probably going to do a podcast with one of the best baseball players to grace West Albany baseball field, the West Albany baseball field, Caleb Beach. <laughs> probably going to do an episode with him on the Dodger series coming up after you know after this Red series, and then going at the end of the month, going to do one with Luke regarding the Angels. So we're going to be taking on the LA squads. We're going to wipe the floor with them and basically on our way to the World Series. And you know what? Let's go. And also, if I... Never mind. I can't do that. Hmm. Can't talk about it. Why? No, we're not going to... We're not even going to get started on the Warriors because it hasn't even happened yet. Game's tomorrow. When you ever, when you ever guys hear this episode, 
I guess it would have already happened. Yeah, the Lakers, mm-hmm. they're screwed. But that's what I, I don't. There's not really much to talk about. The season for the uh, Giants is so long. We can do plenty more talking. But something that <laughs> I definitely wanted to talk about before we get into the newly announced fights and the uh, UFC from last weekend. UFC 262, we have to just take a moment to appreciate Edson Jr. Barboza. Because... Who's that? Dude, his freaking leg split when he was fighting, fighting Shane Burgos. And remember Shane Burgos when he, like, he had the delayed reaction? When he like broke his leg? No, he had the delayed... This is just a fantastic card. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's been honestly from top to bottom that you... Would you agree that... Those the were some of the most entertaining fights. On Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. It, it started off with a bang with my distant relative, Sean Soriano. Not a distant relative. Striking. No, no. Definitely not a distant relative. But, but I'm just like, saying. But it would be sick. I, I told him. I DM'd him, dude. I was like, dude, you got a sick last name, bro. That's <laughs> you all I did. Said. That's all I love I that. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. So Soriano versus uh, Hiagos started off with a bang. Hiagos was getting touched up. On the feet by Sean Soriano. Sean has his striking. Did he win? And Sean did not win. Ah, uh, I didn't watch that fight. No, I but Sean Soriano. He's one of my new favorite fighters, dude. He's striking so good, and but Hiagos got him uh, to the ground and ended up subbing him. But that was oh, kind man. of unfortunate. And then Kevin Aguilar tried to show out for the hometowns, uh, for the hometown super spreader, but super spreader. <laughs> there's a lot of people there. <laughs> Not wearing masks. Kevin Aguilar, you know, didn't get the job. No, Tucker Lux looked really good. And then Cogiera, oh. Priscilla, baby, she just paced up Gina Mazzani and made Gina Mazzani just want to give up. <laughs> and then Andrea Lee uh, dominated Antonina Shevchenko. Jordan Wright, pff, he freaking Modestus Bokowskis did it. Jamie Pickett. Which is crazy. Crazy. He freaking started throwing elbows and then threw Jamie on the ground, ground and pound. First round. Get him out of there. That was, it was fast. Yeah. But it was, yeah. We watched it yesterday, uh, the MMA, Ariel Hawani, when he was talking about uh, making fun of Jordan Wright's girlfriend's name. Matilda. <laughs> But, but then it ended Griselda. up being Griselda. <laughs> but DC was like, Honestly, I didn't know Griselda's we're still cool na- naming our kids Matilda. Would you? You would be that person. You'd be like, oh, this is your fourth kid. Matilda's kind of cute. Okay, first off, no. I feel like you said Matilda's a cute name. I like the movie Matilda. and I Because I've said that the, the teacher, Miss Honey, is books? cute. You know the movie Who's Matilda? The teacher and Matilda. You know the little girl who has magic you powers? Know, I'm, a boy. I'm a boy. All the boys out there, please comment if you've seen Matilda because I All think the bots everyone has seen Matilda. <laughs> everyone has seen it. It's a classic. You oh, know yeah. where she like and she's like that that making all the pancakes. one girl in it that I'm not a big fan of? This is like a 19, like 90s movie. Isn't there a newer one? No, I don't think there's a remake. That one. The okay. little girl. Yeah. Do you know, do you know that movie? Yeah, I'm aware. You actually know it. But see? Yeah, I've seen it. And the that little Miss girl. Honey is the teacher that adopts her. They're like Nancy Drew. <laughs> what I'm just going down a path up? right now. Just girls' <laughs> books that I see in the library when I was little. Oh, okay. Sure. What what are you thinking? Because I was in the girl section a lot. No, I'm <laughs> I was just gonna <laughs> say. I don't even think there's girl sections in the library. No, there's not. <laughs> Anyways. Kel. Is there anything you want to add on? What were you going to say? I don't remember. What were you gonna say? But no, I wouldn't name my kid Get Matilda. Get closer to the mic, honestly. I wouldn't name my kid. Get closer to the mic. Just make it peek out. I wouldn't name my kid Matilda. <laughs> yes, you would. No, I wouldn't. Griselda. Griselda? I already have a list of names. And do not Read say it off. them. No. No, I'm not Atlas? telling any. Don't say anything. I, feel- I don't like saying my baby names to people because they'll steal them. Yeah, just And I've do had that anyway. baby name for like six years. You're fine. Didn't someone already name their kid that? Yeah, but I don't care. This topic makes me uncomfortable. Huh? Don't pressure me. This topic? <gasps> <We're just waiting. laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> okay. But Land of Anata, let's go. Mike Grundy. Mike Grundy, uh, probably some of the best uh, 
cardio I've ever seen. You, how many take? He had an astronomical amount of takedowns, and Lando Venata basically defended all of them. Lando looked really good for his featherweight debut. He looks so good. Another lightweight that looks fantastic moving down a weight class. I'm comparing him to obviously Edson Barboza. Uh, Lando so exciting to watch, and just such a unique style. And then Andre Mooney's made me cringe. One of many seemingly brutal injuries that have transpired God, in the last kind of four days i feel like ronald souza jacare because with kevin pilar andre mooney there's like His one youtube arm literally snapped and he's it? a stud he just got up like nothing god it was bad and there can one thing about the ufc their fans everybody's just crazy because i saw that injury occur one actually not even one too many times probably like five thousand too many times yeah because they're so obsessed with replaying it because joe rogan everybody gotta see that again give me a different angle nah, and nah. Like, it's like dude it's this arm breaking from like five like, different angles and listening to it snap like they were like wanting to hear it like you can hear it break yeah it's disgusting it was awful it's brutal but the fact that he's fine and he like gave him a one-armed hug with a broken arm like he's like good job He's but, like, I mean, he's nice. I mean, nice. With his arm Blimey. down, and then one arm giving a hug with his literal shattered arm. Mm -hmm. But Andre Mooney, what a guy! I mean, best, one of the best grapplers in that middleweight division, baby. And now, it was crazy. Now on to probably the best main card we've seen in a in a fat minute. Starting it off, again, we started off the prelims with fireworks. Start off, yeah, probably close to fight one of the fights of the year so far. Shane Burgos versus Edson Barboza. Edson Barboza. I mean, if you're not going to get this man to the ground, probably going to become... I mean, you have to get him to the ground or else he's going to run through the division because Shane Burgos is one of the best guys in the division, fav favored in this fight for some odd reason. I wish I, we got to make an episode on this. We never got to. Yeah. But Edson Barboza, I was going <laughs> to say, like, I had him winning this, no doubt in my entire mind. Because after his dismantling of Mac Juan Amir Khani, who's basically a world-class wrestler and striker, I mean... And he honestly beat um, Danny Gay too, and Danny Gay's on a freaking tear himself. So I was pretty convinced that Edson Barboza was going to get this dub, especially with the fact that Shane Burgos kind of was in a battle with Josh Emmett his last time out. And that takes a lot of wind out of your sails. We've seen it because we've seen Dan Hooker take crazy shots from Paul Felder and Dustin Poirier in his prior um, in his prior fights, but nothing not to take away from Michael Chandler's power because he's obviously a beast. But, he, I mean... We you don't really see Dan Hooker get that. Uh, you don't see people press his off button. Well, I just think that Shane should have some credit because he literally Sean, Shane? Shane? Shane or is it Sean? Shane? Shane? Yes, it's Shane. That he did I say Sean? No. Um, that because he didn't go down. No, he has the will of a. No, like he literally got knocked out, stayed up, and, and then, then fell. Just, everything fell apart. One of the weirdest things I've ever seen in my entire life. I was so confused. But Edson Barboza, though, he just pieced him up. That's it. Shane Burgos has a chin. Uh, but yeah, he Edson does. just cracked him. And I've never seen somebody. I, I mean, I've seen it maybe like once or twice, but not very often does somebody's leg bust open from kicking at somebody else so hard. There's blood leaking all over. I, I rewatched this whole entire fight card with my dad because he got he was at the coast when there was zero service. And then Caitlin Chukagian, guys, Viviani, or uh, uh, the judging, what is new though? At this point, we've just come as UFC and yeah, MMA are you fans. Me? All we've just rounds? come to accept that MMA judges are complete ass. So any decision and is stupid. Yeah, no, no offense to some. I just rem I just recognize some of the names, and there's like Saul Diamato and some of these guys. I don't I don't know who's doing the judging or whatever, but I just think it's. Because, you know, because I'll just notice, I'll recognize the name because they announce the names of the judges before basically every fight or whatever, or fight card, like between prelims and main, yeah. main cards. So I just recognize the names and trying to find commonalities. And I mean, I don't know. Just conspiracy theorists here. I don't want to call someone out though, because he could be the one judge that actually makes the right call and the other two are just numb nuts. 
but and we saw some new faces some new referees that i don't know the names to i take pride in knowing the names because we've got uh <laughs> we got, i take pride in knowing the names and we got the, we, okay let's name it right now the, test test it we got jason herzog we've got herb dean i was gonna say i like herb herb my herb, man baby and then uh we've got big dan mergliata we've got What's big mustache guy beard name? What about the one that oh, has that literally tattoos scary. to the neck? Yeah, and he has the and huge, then he long has beard. No, he mustache. no oh, he has tattoos to the neck, Peterson. but then he looks so normal. <laughs> yeah, he, he, but he's, he reminds us of that Star Wars guy, the small one. You oh know, in the yeah, first yeah. Season of Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. Well, because he has <laughs> tattoos up to his neck, and then his face and like everything looks normal. Like he doesn't look like a type of guy that would be covered in tattoos. So it's just so weird looking. Mm-hmm. What's another one? So Keith Peterson, Jason Herzog, Herb Dean, Dan Mergliata. Uh dude, there's more. Oh, Mark Smith. Mark Smith's a good one, and no women. No. Huh. We gotta break that barrier. Yeah, they should. Be, there should be women referees during women fights. Yeah, I'll do it. Why not a woman during a man fight? Well, yeah, that too. But why should there be a man in a woman's fight? I don't know. I, I and not a woman. If I had to rank, oh, and then Mark Goddard, classic Mark Goddard, Colby Covington's favorite. Yeah, there should be women with referees. What the freaking heck? a tongue twister Maybe women, 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 <laughs> women referees yeah I, I mean i'm sure there are in probably have you seen one not the oc exactly my point and we can't yeah there's so many uh yeah huh i love the videos about mario yamasaki and some of these other guys who's mario yamasaki classic there's just videos of like let him die or whatever <laughs> like because they're so bad at stopping fights they, this guy does not you like dana white's literally just saying dude you cannot referee in this organization anymore because he just let people get the piss beat out of him so he's like a bad referee yeah wait show me him you have it you didn't even show me a picture there's mario yamasaki that's dana white's favorite referee right there and is then, it actually and then is it steve mazagotti wait does dana actually like him or not like him yeah, Steve Mazzagata. Let's get it on. He's another one. Oh, and then we obviously have Big John McCarthy who used to be in there. Wait, Tons so does he referees. like that guy or no? No, hates him. He hates Mario? Yeah, because he didn't def- protect fighters. He, would, he wouldn't call fights when they should have been he yeah. stopped? Like on a consistent basis, he did, he did that. Why like would he do that? Huh? Why did he do that? Because he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he does. Uh, but but I think one of my my favorite most consistent ones has to be b- b- like Dan Mergliata. He's a beast. I, I've never I don't really in the in recent memory I don't remember Let any me see. time where he's, he like he always is a good caller. Yeah, and he's a big strong guy. So if he has to freaking throw you off, he's gonna throw you off. I feel like I know who you're talking about. Yeah, we named all the main cats. Oh, and Eve Levine. Yeah, wait. Yeah, Eve Levine. He's another classic one. I just remember because I used to play the old UFC Undisputed video games and I obviously watched them as a kid. I watched UFC as a kid on Spike and Fox. But that's Dan Marie Liotta right here. Oh, okay. Another cool guy. Yeah, he's a big dude, see? I can tell without looking at that picture. Huh? I can tell he's a big guy. Yeah, okay. Guys... Enough about UFC referees, okay? Yeah, this is going to be a long episode. Caitlin Chukagi and I'm going to come up with a hot take here. Viviane Arrojo, uh, she won that fight. Caitlin Chukagi and Loki kind of tapped, though. What do you think? Oh, when, hey, yeah. Kinda I kind of tapped. Don't, yeah. I didn't really see it well enough. Like, they were trying to, like, say that she was, like, reaching for her other hand. But I'll yeah, have to look at back. She was reaching back. for something. She was reaching to get saved, bro. <laughs> Yeah, dude, we're only at 20 minutes, guy. Let's get after this. Ah, uh, Kaylin Jukagian, <laughs> I'm sorry, so but I'm not sold. Women's flyweight bout? Kaylin yeah, Jukagian? I'm not a fan of her in general, so aish, aish, I didn't aish, want aish, her to... Aish, 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 when she makes the sounds. Her sounds are so annoying. So loud. But I just don't... Ha- Kaylin, she's good. 
on the feet for sure. Volume fighter. He's going to pick you apart, but you can get her to the ground, dude, and she's not that powerful. Like, So that's the one thing. That's what I like about Viviani Ar- 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 Arajal is that she can <laughs> – She's got that legit one one punch knockout power because she's built. You heard Joe Rogan say it on multiple occasions. Look at the she build on that woman. Build. Look at the build on that woman. Yeah. Hey, cause she got cannons though. Okay. Yeah. Kaylin Chukagian, I'm not sold. She's a good fighter. She looks so good against <laughs> Cynthia Calvillo, but that Jessica Andrade fight just really puts things in perspective in terms of you. Everyone has zero chance of beating Valentina Shevchenko. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. In terms of Matt Schnell, couldn't get it Highway done. Highway to. Highway to Schnell, couldn't get it done for the hometown crowd. If Rahiro Bantarin got the job done, but you know Matt, Schme- uh, Matt Schnell, I mean, Matt Schmel. he, he definitely got he got paid because I'm assuming he got part of that bonus for Rahiro missing weight, but he might not have since it was on short notice. I don't know. Matt Schnell looks so good. His combinations, <laughs> he know. puts them together so quickly. Rahiro Bantarin's good. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, Matt Schnell, I honestly think on a different day, Matt Schnell would look better. I want to see them fight at flyweight because this was obviously a bantamweight bout. I don't know. I don't know, Daddy. I think Matt Schnell is <laughs> a stud. We're here, Monterey stud. Yeah, but Matt Schnell's boxing so much fun to watch. His striking is phenomenal. The, he just, you blink and he has, he'll throw out five punches. It's crazy. Five, six, seven boom, punches. Boom, boom. And then onto the co what do you think we should do with Tony Ferguson? You think he should be done? Mm, I think no, I, th- I don't think I he's done. I think he's got he has tank. stuff in there, in there, you know, in tank. He's got some some fights left in him. Mm-hmm. You got juice. Yeah, you still got juice left. He's got some gas in the tank. <laughs> like you, you got gas recently. Bianca's just got comfortable, you know, letting it out. Helen, around me, it's been like this three. Is not even wait, true. how many? Four years. How many years have we been together? Five? And then the past three months, Kel? just constant. He's going to hear about this right now. He's going to hear. I mean, not now, but after this. hear about this right now? Gonna, let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let's go. Let's, hear about it after let this. Let me episode. hear it right now. <laughs> let's go. hear it. Let's hear it. Give me it. Give me what you, you got. Sleep. You know, that's only going to make the people hear it better is when you're whispering in the microphone. I'm going to kill you. Oh. <laughs> Did you just, I'm going to kill you. Here, you, you want a little secret? Dude, and then you whispered into the mic. I'm really going to hurt you. Hurt me. You going to hurt me? <laughs> you fart in my face. Like, <laughs> he gets Stop, a bro. in my... Oh, yeah. So you could say it to me, but I Did you know Dara used for Tony Ferguson? Yeah. No, he literally puts butt to face. On accident. Like, I'll, like, turn around, and then I'm like, oh, darn <laughs> oh, it. I didn't know that's an accident. No, because I'll just like get up and maneuver okay, around. It's like, so oh, it just slipped, <laughs> slipped, slipped. Don't even. You've literally positioned You know my stomach yourself. is sensitive, dude. <laughs> you position yourself. No, it's by chance. You, we're not talking it's about this anymore. It's by chance. You're 100% by chance. Now. You're a liar. Continue. Okay, we got to just clean, wipe the slate, windshield wiper that off. <laughs> Little windshield wiper <laughs> Why do you have to wipe anything off? You gotta, what do you do? You flick it towards you? you? Get that windshield wiper fluid coming? You actually put it down. You just go. No, that's the blinker. No, that's blinker's, oh, blinkers other, on side. other side. Oh, you press it forward for the high beams? Just learn that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have you to. You actually doing, don't have to hold it back. You and I were doing that. You don't have to hold it back for the whole entire major like Yeah. So we both learned that actually. I learned that like a year ago. So I've and learned you learned it, it a month ago? S- probably. Yeah. Yep. It's cool. much easier. Yeah, I used to hold the high beams and drive. Cause yep. I don't know if you push it forward, they don't teach they stay on. They fail to teach you that when you're going to drive a driver's ed. <laughs> I didn't do Turn everything ed. else on except the high beams. <laughs> turn your lights on, can you put your blinkers on? Can you turn the high beams on? Pull it back a little bit. <laughs> he just put it back. You didn't. Back. I didn't. We didn't know to pull it. You forward. put both ends of the steering wheel. Yeah. <laughs> How am I gonna? <laughs> no, literally, like it was a struggle to like have to drive with holding your high beams. <laughs> Dude, I was like, so I can't not believe you and I both did that not knowing. <laughs> I just, like, I never mentioned I was like, this it to you. This is a crap design. 
Like, how does my dad? Do <laughs> like, how okay. does this? I was like, does this really what everyone does when they're high? When they're on, they just hold it and drive. Do a little Morse code to the other cars <laughs> come by. Hey, hey, but it, it honestly is more effective though, because <laughs> if you're like driving a little bit, no, you want really that high is, and then, on, then someone you comes, come, come you just in. take it off. Two hands on the back on. <laughs> uh, exactly what, what we've had the exact same situation. What was I gonna say, <sighs> dude? Oh my god! Lose my time just flies in here. I'm fine. Here we go. You make me physically cringe. Hot, Continue. Hot take. But you know, Darius goes five rounds with Habib. I don't know. Uh, that's not a hot. That's not happening. That's not happening. No. Oh. Why not? You said like Khabib literally. No, yeah, I did say that. the The fact about the whole main event, how that transpired, yeah, just goes to show how great Khabib is. Charles Oliveira, I don't think stands a shot against Khabib. Michael Chandler, hundred percent, does not stand a chance. Tony Ferguson, not even in that question. Benil Dariush, though, ag competent, way competent on the feet. We'll throw spinning attacks at you, unpredictable. But his ground game is phenomenal. So that's the only reason why I can... Not to say that Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler aren't gr- phenomenal on the ground. I'm just saying in terms of build and strength-wise, Michael Chandler is a stud. But we saw Charles Oliveira take his back, you know. Even though Michael Chandler says it was on purpose. I don't see Michael Chandler threatening Khabib at all. I see Benil Dariush. He's in his physical prime. And he is... I just... he's He's got that different kind of strength that some of these Middle that, Eastern oh. guys... In the Eastern European guys, you know, in Russian, they just are different. They're built differently. <laughs> like built the, different. Benil Dariush said it best. They're born to do this. They're not bred to do it like some of the American guys or other people. Charles Oliveira is good, but I don't think his frame fits well with Benil Dariush or yeah. Habib yeah. strength-wise. That is true. But he's so technically sound. So basically, if I was forced to sit through Benil Dariush destroying Tony Ferguson for six rounds because I had to watch it twice, which was not very fun. But Benil, the more I was watching it, his how high level he is on the ground, it's so much fun to watch. Yeah, no, he's really like his like, transitions and his ability. Because even Tony had him when on like a little reversal where Tony was on top and in the snap of a finger, Benil was right back on top, and he f- destroyed Tony's knee with an ankle hook or ankle lock. Yeah, I don't know how Tony didn't tap. That's crazy to me, but. Yeah, I think that Benil Dariush versus Charles Oliveira is a very underrated. It, that would be a really good fight. We've seen Benil. I think on the feet, I de- definitely give the edge to Charles. But on the ground, I think that Benil can control Charles. I don't know because Benil's so high level. But the thing is with Charles Oliveira in terms of the main event, Michael Chandler looked absolutely phenomenal. We both know that he basically won that arguably a 10-8 uh, round. Michael Chandler was on the precipice he had it in his fingertips a yeah, ufc really belt did. he had one of those little gems that they put in the in the, the, the that they put in the ufc belt in his hand like it was there he had a little taste i'm honestly happy though that yeah oliver got yeah, it me too because it's more deserving yeah he's been in here for a decade he's been grinding away moved up to a weight class that's more comfortable for him and he found success which is great and he's made such good strides because I've, i don't think it's been a long time i mean we see high level ufc every weekend high level fighters but i don't think i've ever seen a more beautiful left hook on display than what charles Oliveira hit and eventually what led to the defeat of michael chandler because that thing was hidden michael chandler threw a shot and all of a sudden it went from here to just here with power <laughs> and it stunned Michael and that led to the end of the fight which there's zero things that Michael Chandler could have done in that scenario besides being he could have been a little more calculated and less aggressive but that's his style and Charles caught him because he's so technically sound on the feet yeah like, no, I've never seen a more technical. short left hook that was just so effective in a while it was really fantastic it was like this yeah this card was great top to bottom now so that was literally a review of last week's card it was it's worth the review no it is it's worth the review but i guess we got to go before we transition into the predictions for next this upcoming card uh this saturday i guess we kind of have to we're we're cruising right now absolutely flaming what are we at we gotta 
I'm going to talk about some fights that were just announced that I got super pumped about. Which one should we talk about first? I guess actually, let's just let's just hit him with this right now. Alejandro Pantoja versus Brandon Royville. We haven't seen Brandon Royville since. I'm gonna give early predictions for these two. We haven't seen Brandon Royville since he lost to Brandon Moreno with that. He had that freaking he shoulder popped out of place a few times. Remember that? Mm-hmm. You remember that? Mm-mm. Yeah, you do. Remember oh. when it came out and he had oh, to pop yeah. Oh yeah, wait. Why does that not look like him? He's Hawaiian, right? Uh, he's the Hawaiian guy. I don't think he's. I don't know. I don't. I think he's Hispanic. Oh wait, no, he's not. <laughs> Versus Alejandro Prantoja, though. I'm not. Yes, I remember. And he literally was just like holding his shoulder and was like. Ugh. Yeah, and his coach had to put it back in or something. Yeah, it was disgusting. But yeah, Alejandro Prantoja. On Pantoja versus Brandon Royville. Alejandro, you got the coolest name when you pronounce when you pronounce Alexander and like Alexander <laughs> versus Alejandre. That's freaking swagtastic. That is so sick. Alexandre, I, yeah. Because Alexander. the X is like a Z, and it's sexy. And then Pantoja, and on Alexander. top of that, he's so hot. He's a looker, dude. I'm telling you, with that stash, he's Wait, a killer. Let me, let me he's a killer. Shut up. Look up. I look up a picture of him. Let me see. God, I, I just love him. He's so much. Fun. UFC four. Test that sucker out. He will beat the majority of people. UFC four. What's UFC video game? He's oh, so good. Yeah. He's so good. He's on it. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah, show me him, please. Alejandre. But yeah, he's top flight. Alejandro. I just think he looks so sick. Okay. He just looks like UFC fighter, dude. Look at that his mustache. It's sick. He's a beast. He's just a stud. That's it. That's all. That's I don't know. Like you actually think that like he's attractive. No, I don't think he's like attractive. I was just playing around. I just think that he's just he's got that kind of that spice. He's got that s- <laughs> spice. He's got that spice. ASMR. <laughs> ASMR break. What's a good ASMR? Milk, milk. <laughs> oh yeah, milk, milk, milk. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I don't know why. I, like, actually, gotta like ASMR. Do you like ASMR? Bro, not gonna lie. When I tune into my meditation class, I kind of like this. When she is like talking, and I'm just like laying on my back, like it's relaxing. Yeah. Well, that's not just, ASMR. But, but it's like relaxing. It's like a form of ASMR in a way. ASMR is sounds, yeah, like is. But the um, talking is like soothing to me. <laughs> yes, that's just literally what meditation is. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> the, I have this weird thing. This is UFC episode, but I have this weird thing <laughs> where I don't know what it is, but me watching there's this Gonstead chiropractic stuff with Doctor Raheem. Okay. And for some reason, I love watching it and his voice and the way he talks sometimes like gives me tingles. Yeah, I get and tingles. I like watch it. But like some of this <laughs> stuff is so sick, like that detector that they put on your neck and they run it down your spine. And You've it, like, never shown detects me detects the energy uh, like like heat spots where there's tension in your spine. And when he's running it down their spine and stuff, I don't know. I just get the biggest kick out of it. And does he is it like you can hear him cracking their backs and stuff kind of I don't really do it for that but he does this weird stuff where like he'll shake your hand and he'll like crack your thumbs and your this and it's just so relaxing you'll have to show me the video I'll have to show you. because no there's I, multiple he has his own YouTube channel but like your favorite one that gives you the most tingles I don't really have it it's harder because they have like these freaking tables and stuff where <laughs> when you that have a little Those space darn or tables my tables. no when they have like space in them so like when to when they crack them you more hear the table smash instead of actually the crack you know oh you hear it like pop yeah instead of the actual cracking releasing of yes the, interesting yeah. so it's not really that but back to this fight Alejandro Pantoja is going to win this fight. I'm telling you. And then he's going to get a title shot after the Brandon Moreno versus Davidson Figueredo. It's tough, though, because Askar Askarov is right there. But I see Alejandro Pantoja eventually getting his hands on that belt for sure. I was super pumped to hear that fight was announced. Um, Tiago Santos versus Johnny Walker. Definitely lean towards Johnny Walker in here. I don't know if Tiago Santos can get the job done. To, like, 
his fight versus Rakic was less than spectacular, and Johnny Walker is so dynamic. He could carry the fight, but I don't see Tiago Santos. He hasn't been the same after that John Jones fight. And then Derek Brunson versus Darren Till. I was hoping maybe a Hamza Chemaev thing would happen with Darren Till, but Derek Brunson versus Darren Till is going to be good. Darren's going to be tested with Derek Brunson's wrestling, but I think he's probably going to keep him at bay, crack him a few times, and get that job done because he's uh, Darren Till's a way higher level grappler than uh, Kevin Holland, and that's what Derek Brunson just exposed Kevin Holland. But I think Darren Till is going to get the job done versus Derek Brunson because D- Darren Till literally trains with Tom Aspinall, and Tom Aspinall had that blast double against Andre Arlovski and took his back and choked him out. So I think Darren Till is going to be able to handle Derek Brunson. And then Paulo Costa versus Jared Cannonier. Jared Cannonier hasn't fought since his fight against Robert Whitaker, I, want, I think. And then Paulo Costa hasn't obviously fought till he got dismantled against Israel Adesanya. I honestly have no idea what to expect in this fight because Paulo Costa, I don't... Maybe his confidence is... Dude, I, after getting cr- just freaking slashed by the champ, it must be like seriously... Um, because there's zero excuses for it to happen. You know, like... Yeah. So I just can't even imagine how devastating that must have been. And Jared Cannonier. Didn't really have much success against Robert Whitaker. So I honestly, that for me is a push. Probably going to lean towards Paulo Costa just because he's younger. And then. You're just making all of these early prelims right now? Yeah, these are just crazy fights. I mean, early predictions? Yeah, for just random fights that have been announced that I was super pumped for. And then the, uh, I don't, Jeremy Stevens versus Gamrot. Gamrot just had a sick knockout against Scott Holtzman. And then Jeremy Stevens basically crapped on Dracar Close's Pop Tart by destroying his opportunity at getting a fight, which is really frustrating for Jakar Close. But I'm going to look at Gamrot to get the KO here over Jeremy Stevens. And now for the the big thing that I wanted to talk about that I'm so excited for that I think people are sleeping on is Tiago Moises versus Islam Makachev. People obviously aren't sleeping on this fight, but I truly, in my honest to God heart, I believe Tiago Moises can get the job done versus Islam Makachev. Given the fact that Tiago Moises is so high level on the ground and his striking is so insane. Like Islam Makachev is good on the feet and he's above, way above average on the ground. Like he's better than he can. He Islam Makachev can beat basically everybody in the lightweight division. But this fight against Tiago Moises is going to be tough because Tiago's fought. Um, he fought Bobby King Green that was on a tear, and then Michael Johnson's obviously known for wrestling in his left hand, and then. He um, beat Alexander Hernandez in his last timeouts, and then Islam Makhachev dismantled Drew Dober. So I'm, but I just really think that Tiago Moises could get the freaking knockout, and uh, not knockout here. I just think that he can keep Islam Makhachev's wrestling at bay, and end up winning a stand up battle against Islam Makhachev. But even if it does go to the ground, which it obviously is, I think Islam is. Gonna, I mean, I think Islam is going to have a tougher time keeping Tiago down on the ground. But I don't know. I'm just, I'm really, I've just been, I was, I was just really excited to hear that Tiago Moises got this fight because, uh, I love watching him fight because he's so explosive on the feet. Like when he was fighting Alexander Hernandez, those guys throw heat seeking missiles and Tiago Moises, if he connects, he can rattle your cage. And we've seen that Islam is susceptible to getting hit at times and he's been knocked out. So I, even though Islam is on a freaking crash course, to be fighting for the title eventually it's in his it's it's his destiny to become a lightweight champion just because of Habib but Tiago Moises is going to be a tough out and he's going to be probably a freaking heavy underdog and if you want to make some cash Tiago Moises is a safe bet because we're not talking about a guy that's going to get run over like I'm I, I genuinely have a feeling that he is going to be there to stay in a competitive fight with Islam for the entire 15 minutes. We're not going to see just one competitive round or two competitive rounds. We're going to see three competitive rounds, and it's probably going to be 1-1 one, one going into the third round if there hasn't been a finish prior. But that's what I wanted to say. I think a lot of people are probably going to say that Islam Makhachev is going to get that dub, but I'm going to be one of the few people that says Tiago Moises is going to get the job done. Go off. You know, that's that. I, I And then what is another one? Uriah Hall versus Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland, that's tough. Sean Strickland's <laughs> good. I can't believe we're doing all of these right now. Why? Uriah Hall, I'm just so pumped about all these newly announced fights. Uriah Hall, I don't know, dude. Sean Strickland, he's got a nice jab, and he's going to like, he'll piece you up. So, 
But Uriah Hall is so dynamic on the feet. I have no idea. I'm probably going to lean towards Uriah Hall in that fight. Let's see. Any more that happen? It's ha- it's good to see Jacques Array, uh looking oh, good. I can't and then, that. Yeah. And then Corey St. Hagen versus TJ Dillashaw. That's rescheduled for July 24th. That's going to be crazy. If they had that Marina Rodriguez versus Michelle... I mean, they put that together on short notice, that main event. But that would have been a crazy fun card to have Marina Rodriguez. Uh, right? That's her name, right? Dude? I don't know. Yeah, it, it is Marina. But you, so you don't think Alejandro Pantos is attractive? No. He doesn't have that like exotic spice that you like. Mm. He doesn't have enough of it. What about with the mustache though? The mustache and no mustache is a little different. The mustache gives a little. The mustache makes it worse. What's that one movie, dude? With, what's the one movie? Do McDougal? Do, no. What's the one movie where they have like? Are you talking about the scary movie? And you're no, no, no. The one where the there's like the wizards, and, no, not wizards. He's like stuck in ice. The carousel. What are we doing here? (laughs) What are we saying here? The carousel and ice. You're not talking about. Dougal. Is it Dougal? I've never heard of that movie in my life. <laughs> yes, it's Dougal. Well, I've never here. seen that. Why? I That's crazy that I've never seen this movie. You've seen every kid's movie. I, I know, like. so this is weird. Well, it got 8% on Rotten Tomatoes, so Ooh, here we go. Bad. Dougal. I loved this movie as a kid. Really? I've never seen this before. Google characters. Let me see here. It no, was search images. Characters no, there's images. a certain character that he reminds me of. Let me see here. <laughs> Dougal. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Isn't there? No, it might not be this. Is it? This G- is. I'm. This is a down. We've gone down a path that has just. It is just whack. I don't remember. We're going to have to look this up later and hit you with it in a second. There's one movie where there's like a bad guy and a good guy. That doesn't really... (laughs) (laughs) Are you talking about like Lazy Town? I have no... no. I know exactly what I'm talking about and I just can't... I really want to know what you're talking about because I'm really good at finding things out. We're going to figure this out. Okay, are we done with that yet? Yes. Dude, listen to me right now. We're only at 42. Let's only. get through this. Let's get through this. Let's get through this. No, we're d- we're almost done. We're almost done. I promise. I, I No, I'm not saying like let's hurry this up. I just thought you had like a lot of things to touch on. Is this just going to be a UFC episode today? Yeah. Oh, okay. A little bit of Giants and UFC. We're not talking about anything else. This is oh, it. Oh, okay. I just want to talk about the um Cody Garbrandt versus Rob Font. Rob Font. We'll get to that at the that's obviously the uh main event. I'm all over the place here because I'm trying to, in the back of my mind, it's like working, trying to figure out what I was talking about. And then <laughs> there's like wizards. And then I'm trying to think. Try to just give me some other explanation. So there's, there's like a kid. Okay. And he's trying to. Is it with cartoons or is it people? Cartoons. Are is you it sure cartoons? it's not that? Wait, it is this. Yes. Yes. It reminds you of that? That's called magic something. Magic roundabout? Have you heard of that? What's a magic roundabout? No. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're seriously What's getting that somewhere. One? Right. Click on that. Is he in there? Oh, we're here. We're getting here. <gasps> yes, it's called the magic roundabout. <laughs> the magic roundabout. What is happening? We're getting somewhere. Yes, we're here. What did this get on Rotten Tomatoes? Okay. I've never heard of this. The Magic Roundabout life. 2005 film. Go to images. Images. There's a little red guy. They're like these little wizards. One guy's cold, has <laughs> cold powers. One guy has hot powers. And they're trying to hey, do that something. That guy looks like Look Doug at this from guy. Up. No, this is the guy. This is what all... Oh my god, Kellen, you have made a scientific breakthrough. This is like your... Wow, this is... Some part of your like psyche is like coming out right now. Yes, it's called Magic Roundabout and this guy, How Magic did... Roundabout Cold Guy, Cold Wizard. Cold Wizard. Magic Roundabout Cold Wizard. This guy, does he not look like Alejandro Pantoja? <laughs> does he not? 
Alan's discovery right now. Wow. He doesn't. Give me this right now. 100% taking... Look at his nose. Okay. Nose. Kelly, that, nose. that is a Mustache. Bro, I love Alejandro. He's one of my favorite fighters in the flyweight division and the UFC all around. <laughs> but he just gives me this look of this guy from Magic Round about the cold he wizard had hair, guy. Yeah. Look at it. Does that he not? He looks scary. He's not a good guy. I, I would have been I mean, scared of this movie. I think. I don't know what my parents made me watch. What about the red one? He looks the same. Yeah, this is. Look at him. That they're, looks they're like, like him more yes, because he has hair. Yes, dude. Let's go. We made a breakthrough. I'm genuinely happy I found that movie Good because job, I watched that so many times. I have never heard of it, never seen it, never want to see it. Yeah, the magic roundabout. That's the carousel I was talking about. That's the carousel. <laughs> and it got frozen. Wait, then where did the first one come from? Well, what did you first look up? Dougal is the, he's the, he's the dog in it. That's the main character. Oh. Okay. What a day. See, and I told you to click on that photo. You weren't even gonna. And you're like, wait, what is the magic brown about? No, we're on we're on it. We figured it out. You figured it out. High five. Nux. 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 <laughs> That's not a nux. Knuckles, babe. <laughs> All right. Now, moving on to the freaking end of this episode. We're just going to soar right through into the Rob Font, Cody Garbrandt, UFC Fight Night predictions. <laughs> love that for us not even gonna really do the predictions honestly we're just gonna do just touch and go touch and go who thinks gonna win just just it's like not even landing we're just gonna go okay let's get into it <laughs> starting it off demir ishmagulov versus rafael alves i'm looking demir. forward to demir ishmagulov by far yeah it, you don't even have to even think about it really like his name, just like, you know. I mean, he's him. one. What is he, 19 and one? Dang. No. Yeah, dude, he's, what is he? What's Looking his, at him, you wouldn't and think one. that he would be a fighter. No, he's a stud. And then versus Rafael Alves, I, I don't know much about Rafael. He looks like a stud too. He does, 100%. He's a Brazilian. I want to say, yeah. The Turn is his name? The Turn. Hmm. That's cool. Okay. Don't know. Let's look up. Who's Rafael beat? So we're not going to look up every single person. You're right. You're, oh, is this his UFC debut? Yeah. Let's get is. into it. That's a tough. Here, welcome to the show. Let's give you a freaking. <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not give you a easy in fight here. We're gonna throw you to the freaking wolves right away. Then I think it's Demir's UFC debut. Is it UFC? Oh well, then that kind of works out in a way. It's kind of fantastic. <laughs> nope. Nope. Definitely not his first. He's beat. He's actually wow, beat Tiago that's Moises. Really messed up of you to even say that. Then. I've never seen him fight before. <laughs> Just kidding. Never seen the man fight before. Okay. Demir Jmugulov versus Rafael Alves. Going Demir on that one. Yancy Medeiros versus Demir Hadzovic. I'm going to go with uh, Yancy Medeiros. But now, going like to what's up? Yancy Medeiros. Yeah, he trains with Nate, big Nate, and then he is Hawaiian too. So. Okay, now the guy, the fighter that I wanted to highlight. So we're going to, so Josh Kulibau is fighting Shah Yalan. And I want Josh Kulibau to come on the show so bad. He's one of my favorite fighters. I remember when he made, uh, was it his, I think it was actually his debut in the UFC when he fought Jalen, Tur was it his U UFC debut? Yeah, it was UFC debut. He fought Jalen Turner. Um and Jalen Turner, as we know, long, huge, big 155-er. And I think it honestly, was this it? I want to, I think it maybe was at 170 too. I'm not 100% sure. Let me see. Nope, it was at 155. But, yeah, uh, Josh Kulibau. He's going to get in a scrap every time he fights. So he had a split decision draw with Charles Jordan, and then he also fought Jalen Turner and held his own in that fight, even though Jalen Turner is... So unbelievably big for that 155 pound division. So he's going to be fighting Yilin Shaw, who I have no idea. I think this is probably his UFC. Yeah, this is going to be his UFC debut too. So we've got a lot of UFC debuts here. But just look out for Josh Kulibau because he's so good on the feet and he is going to just stand and bang with you. But he's also, he's obviously good everywhere. But I love watching Josh Kulibau fight because he's going to bring an absolute scrap. Because him and Charles Jordan went back and forth. That was a really good fight. Now... Next fight, 
another guy you need to key in on is Bruno Silva versus Victor Rodriguez. I'm going with Bruno Silva. I'm going on this Victor. One. Okay. He's a looker. Huh? Whatever. It doesn't even matter. I want to actually look at his photo. You want to see Victor Rodriguez? Yeah, he kind of looks good from right there. How yeah, you, I think he's cute. How do you think Victor's cute? And you don't think Alejandre is cute? Dude? Look up, look up an actual photo of Victor. Oh, he's from Rodriguez. Mexico. That's why you like him. Is he? Oh, that's not why, but you know, that's a plus. Okay, so get out of here with that. Get out of here with that right now, because I want to talk. I wanna, no, no, I want to talk about Bruno Silva. So Bruno Silva's back was against the wall. Okay, he <laughs> he he beat, he lost to David Dvorak. Nothing to hang your head about, and he lost to to Gear Ulan back off. Back but against the wall. He beat JP Boyce, who had so much hype. Him and his wife had so much hype coming in behind him. But then he ended up beating JP Boyce. But that fight, he just showed so much, so many good things. Like it was crazy. Uh well, yeah, he didn't he end up was it he got a knockout in that fight. And I just like watching he's another like guy like Josh Kulibau, who is gonna bring an absolute firefight there's so many exciting fighters especially that ufc flyweight division is flames but i'm i'm really looking forward to watching bruno silva fight i'm, I'm looking at him getting that dub flyweight division is so much fun to watch because these guys even though they might not be the most powerful they're just so technically sound and they're so fast and it's a lot of action in a short period of time especially in a three-round fight because their output can be insane you know Mm-hmm. And then Claudio Silva versus Court McGee. Probably going to go Court McGee on that one, dude. Even though he's lost three in a row, though. Right? He lost three in a row. <laughs> I think so. That's yeah. So funny. Lost, yeah, but the guys he's lost to, Diego Lima, Sean Brady, and Carlos Condit. Like, come on, dude. Those are some of the best guys in the um, welterweight division. And then Claudio Silva, who is he about? Honestly, I have no idea. He be, he lost to James Cross. I don't I don't know, dude. I'm going Court McGee on this one for shizzle. Now, for shizzle. Ben Rothwell versus Chris Barnett. Ben Rothwell's a good. He's beat OSP. He beat March. Uh, he didn't. He he lost to March in Tibera. Uh, but he's fighting Chris. Freaking yeah, he beat Owen Saint and lost to March in Tibera. But he lost. He's fighting this guy, bro. Chris Barnett, who looks like a monster, an absolute monster, and <laughs> it, I think this is going to be his UFC debut as well. Chris Barnett, dude, I don't know much about him, but Beast Boy. Yeah, he looks um, like a beast. Let's let's go out on a limb here. Let's say Beast Boy gets the job done. Yeah, I'm. I, what I saw With this a nickname picture, like that. It's gonna happen. Let's say Beast Boy gets the job done here. I'm I'm taking it. I'm gonna say this that too. This card is actually so fire because, like I've said, we've got Josh Coolibau, okay, Bruno Silva, Chris Brown versus Brand Mothball. Now we got Ricardo Ramos, Hamos, who's lost his last fight uh, to Lerone Murphy, but doesn't really matter because, uh. Because he's such a dynamic striker and he's going to bring issues to whoever he fights. And Ricardo Hamos, so exciting. Probably one of the more exciting 145ers uh, in the division. But he's going to be going up against Bill Algio, who Bill Algio beat Spike Carlisle. Spike, Car- Spike Carlisle is an absolute baller. He's so strong. Uh, so I'm I'm really looking forward to this fight. I have no idea who's gonna win, but I'm going to have to lean towards Ricardo Hamos, given the fact that he is so unpredictable on the feet and can throw spinning techniques, and just has the ability to clip you. And this fight was canceled prior; they were supposed to fight in April. Now they're getting it back, but I'm definitely pumped to see Bill Algio and Ricardo Hamos fight. So that wraps up the prelims. The prelims. I hopefully this card stays together because it's going to be. Baller. Mm. Don't be hating on me. I'm not hating on you. Now main main card. Main card. Almost done. Almost done. Jack Manson and Edmund Shabazzian. This was supposed to be on the pay-per-view from last weekend, but Jack Manson and Edmund Shabazzian moved back. I'm looking at Edmund Shabazzian on this one. I think Jack Manson could be a little susceptible on the feet and had been such a good striker, but Jack could take him down and pull a Kelvin Gastelum on in some and get him in something crazy funky because jack even though he got cracked early against 
um, Marvin Vittori, he still managed to dig deep and make that a five-round battle. So I don't know. And Edmund Shabazian, he's coming off a tough loss. He's first ever loss against Derek Brunson. So I don't really know. I, I, I believe Edmund Shabazian should get the job done. But don't be surprised if Jack Hermanson manages to stay in that middleweight title picture because he's so good and he's fought the best of the best in that division. Let's see. Who is he? Yeah, he beat Marvin Vittori, beat Kelvin Gastelum, lost to Jared Cannonier, beat Jacare. Uh, Tia, yeah, he lost to Tiago Santos. Dude, yeah, he's fought some studs. And so this is a big step up in competition again for Edmund Shabazian. But I think he get the job done. Now, moving on to my lock, my absolute lock for this next this next fight between David Dvorak and Halle and Paiva. I'm this if you're gonna bet money, bet the freaking bank, bet the house on this because David Dvorak is going to annihilate Halle and Paiva. Halle's good, but in his fight against, I'm just still a little salty against his fight where he beat Jalgas Jumagulab because I honestly thought Jalgas won that fight, and he he's just I I David Dvorak's leg kicks. Against Jordan, Esp- Jordan Espinosa, I think he's going to eat up Halle and Paiva. He's such a... Um, pfft, what's it? David Dvorak <laughs> is such a good striker, dude. And I think Halle and's good, but... Again, this flyweight division is crazy. And oh, one thing that did bother me is too is Halle missed a weight last time. That was kind of annoying. Oh, so. yeah. Um, but this is my lock. David Dvorak is going to get this Don't dub. Work. Yeah. But his striking's crazy. He's beat Bruno Silva, who's also on the card, and then nice. he's, he's shredded Jordan Espinoza. Jordan Espinoza is one of the best boxers in that flyweight division as well. So yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm I'm the Undertaker. David Dvorak is going to get this dub. Where's he from? Hmm? Where's he from? Um, let me see. David Dvorak is from Czech Republic. So another oh. one of those studs. I think that's where David Dobrik is from too. Really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't Actually, know. Actually, let me look it up. I don't know. But Jalgazu Magulov, don't forget about that guy. He's a beast. Uh, Now, Felicia Spencer coming back. First time since losing to Amanda Nunes. He's in... from Kosis, Slo- Slovakia, actually. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yes. David well, Dobrik is from Slovakia. There you go. Not from Czech Republic. I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, he's actually an immigrant. He's part of the DACA program. That's how he's in the U.S. That's cool. Well, yeah, it's he's cool that... He's decent living. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, this card is so sick. Uh, Felicia Spencer, I think she's so going to get the dub sick. against Norma Dumont. I, I I think she's... Norma Dumont looks pretty good, but... Sorry. Sorry. I th- she, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. She beat Ashley Evans-Smith. I remember that fight. Lost to Megan Anderson. I'm definitely looking for Felicia Spencer to get this dub, though, because she's one of the toughest people on planet Earth after the beating she took against Amanda Nunez. And so uh, for the main card, we got Justin Toffa versus Jared Vandera. So Jared Vandera versus Justin Toffa, that's going to be sick because Justin Toffa, his output in his boxing is so good, and for being a heavyweight, he doesn't seem to get tired. Cause Bad in his, man. In his last fight out, he lost to Carlos Felipe, but they struck the whole entire time, and it did not seem as if they really got too tired at like heavyweights usually do. Justin Toffa, he managed his energy really well and was in it till the very end. So I'm I'm looking forward to watching Justin Toffa fight. I think he's gonna, definitely going to get this dub, probably. I don't know. It's so hard to say, especially in heavyweight division, because you could be winning an entire fight and then get cracked, and then everything's over. But don't count on Jared Vandera because he lost to Sergey Spivak, who's a stud. There's so many young, up-and-coming guys in heavyweight division, like, obviously, Sergey Spivak, but then uh, Alexander Romanov. So heavyweight, every, or basically every division is stacked. But I think flyweight division is probably... The most exciting. It's that. Flyweight division is one of my favorite to watch. And women, <laughs> women's women's straw weight is really good too. Really? That's yeah. one of your favorites now? Yeah. That's crazy. I love your little goatee bad. I, I shaved it because Mikey Stremski and Mikey Stremski has that. 
He just has a mustache going. He, he has a, a mustache and a soul and patch. And a goatee and a soul patch. I, really? That's how you did it? Yeah. I love it. We got to get on their bandwagon. And uh, Austin Slater has it too. That's funny. Yes. Now, Jan Jonan uh, versus Carla Esparza. Jan Jonan's going to get this dub. She's on the freaking crash course for a title shot. She's so good at everything she does. Finally, Cody Garbrandt versus Rob Font, baby. Everybody thinks Cody Garbrandt, they're on that Cody Garbrandt hype train, but Rob Font, Cody Garbrandt can do everything good. His boxing is phenomenal, but Rob Font's boxing is so good. He clipped Marlon Marais, and I'm so pumped. I think this is, I don't think everybody's going to get finished in this fight. If it does, if there is a finish, I see it happening in the third round, but I think it's going to be a five round war. On ESPN, I picked Cody Garbrandt to win, but I want to be on the record saying that I think Rob Font's going to win <laughs> I this. Be on the record. I think Rob Font's going to win this fight. That's a cool name, Rob Font. Like, it just looks so, like, short. Puerto Rican, baby. Rob Font. Yeah, I think Rob Font's got this dub. But, you know, Cody Garbrandt's really good. I don't know what's going to happen. I kind of think Cody because... Hmm? He just looks like like a badass. Cody is. He's Cody No Love is a stud. Oh, isn't Rob Font Puerto Rican, dude? Rob Font Puerto Rican. Spell? Puerto Rican. It's like Puerto. Yeah. Bringing Puerto Rican style in. I think he is. Yeah, I love Rob Font. He's so good. <sighs> that wraps that up. <laughs> I've talked so much, I feel like. You just got to get it all out. We've had a lot. We didn't do an episode last week, so we had to recap that also you know yeah that's what happens when you don't when we don't film mm-hmm. i but let me just get this off my chest since we're speaking about getting oh only an hour let's go uh speaking of getting things off my chest nobody's beating the real champion and the real champion is not aljamain sterling it is Piotr yawn i don't see any <laughs> of these people beating Piotr yawn because Piotr is better than you at everything <laughs> he is a better boxer than you, and he's a better wrestler and grappler than you. So it's good luck. Uh, the best shot at somebody beating him, probably Corey Sanhagen, but I still don't see that happening. I just don't see Peter Pieterion losing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He's badass. He is. He's a stuff. Why is it when I agree with you, you have to like disagree with my No, agreeing? I pretend like she Bianca knows so much, actually. I, but yeah, I'm going I've watched him fight multiple times. So yeah, I do know a lot. Yeah, you've Thanks. watched him fight Jose Aldo and you watched him beat Aljamain Sterling. So come at me, man. <sighs> yeah, he has a he has a win. Uh, Rob Font has a win over our boy Ricky Simone. Ricky Simone is going to probably eventually maybe become bandweight champ of the world. Champion. Or, <gasps> He we are awesome. the champion, my friend. That's that. We're done. We that talked about everything episode? from a little bit of the Giants to UFC 262 to Rob Font to newly announced fight. Well, to Rob Font versus Cody Garbrandt UFC fight card to newly announced fights to Fark. <laughs> We've hit a lot of to points. To the magic roundabout. We're, we're ready to go. We're ready to pursue this career if podcasting as a full-time job. A lot of points have been Boys, hit Boys, like, subscribe, comment, do everything in your power to get me on it on a UFC <laughs> stage. Skyrocket Kellen's career. Just do what you can to just support the channel. We are so <laughs> well versed at everything we do. And where is the stop record button? Oh, here it is. Here we go. The little red one. Thank okay. you. Thank you guys so much for watching. See ya. We're gonna be improving next those week. thumbnails. Proving. You guys are gonna be clicking. It is what it is. We got to figure them out first. Peace out. Bye.